Paul gets word that the ship won't make it, but God also gives him an encouraging word. He says, Paul, the ship might not make it, but all of you all will. And the minute Paul receives word from God that he will survive, that the soldiers are gonna survive, that the prisoners are gonna survive, that the sailors are gonna survive, he now knows it's his assignment to encourage people on a ship that's falling apart that God said, you will survive. Beloved, I came by here on the last Sunday of 2023 with a Pauline assignment on my life to declare unto you, thus saith the Lord, you will survive. No matter what the storm is, you're going to make it. No matter what the shipwreck will bring, you're going to make it. No matter what disappointment you face in this new year, no matter what heartache you got to go through, the word of the Lord to somebody going into this new year is you will Caribbean a little bit. Is that all right? And if you don't mind, come on, rest on your two feet with us, because we're going to give God glory in the Caribbean style. Come on, put your hands together like this. There you go. Clap those hands, all ye people. Come on, make a joyful noise. Come on, come on. Come on, move those two feet. If you're happy in Jesus, come on. Church, one more time. Let's go, Kaya Shake. Jehovah, you say, I trust, I trust in you. In you. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Jehovah, you. I trust. I trust in you. In you. Somebody say, I believe. Say, I believe. I believe you. I trust.
gonna take care of you no matter what. Come on, we're not done yet. Where are all the church clappers? I want you to stay right where you are. Come on, Carl, put those hands together just like that. All the family, yes, sir. Come on. <laughs> we got a familiar one for you with a little twist. Come on, let me see it. the joy and the strength of my life. He moves all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to keep me, never to leave me. He's never ever come short of
day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing in it because God is. God is here. God is in me and you. God is in this place. God is wiping down the walls of this place. The anointing of God is falling right now in the name of Jesus. God is. Hallelujah. Our scripture for this morning will come from Psalm 107. If you are not already on your feet, please do so. Psalm 107 reads from the NRSV. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Those who he be redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in the desert waste, finding no way to an inhabited town. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. They, then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them from a straight way until they reached an inhabited town. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. For he satisfies the thirsty and the hungry. He fills with good things. Alpha Street family, those who are here and those who are online, we want to take this time to pray for one another. We have to pray for Vincent Caldwell in the passing of his father, Ransom Newkirk Jr. Sister Barbara Cottom in the passing of her father, Brother John F. Chapman Jr. Sister Marjorie Innocent in the passing of her mother, Janine Innocent. Kathleen Baker and the Baker family in the passing of her sister, Teresa Simmons. Who else are we praying for? Type also in the chat and let us go to the throne of grace. Gracious and all wise God, we are here. We are humble at your throne, Lord God, and we are grateful that you are here. We are grateful that you are present in our lives. We are grateful, God, that you allowed us to see another day. But we also pray for those whose hearts are break, breaking at this time. We pray, God, for those who have lost loved ones during this holiday season. We pray for them as they begin to plan homegoing services, Lord God, and we pray, God, for the family as they will be united. We pray for unity in the name of Jesus. We also pray, God, for those who may be sick, those who may not have been able to come into the sanctuary and those who are online that are gathered with us this morning. We pray, God, that you will touch everyone's household. Where there is lack, be whatever they need because you are. Where there is a lack of love, we pray, Lord, that you would be love. Where there is a lack of peace, let, the, let you be peace. We pray, God, that whatever they stand in need of, Lord God, that you will magnify it in them and in their homes. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Join us for our congregational hymn of rejoicing. Ho to God's unchanging hand. Amen.
brother's hand as well and pass the peace, pass the peace out for street. Street. To our guests who grace us with the presence of God by your presence and worship, to our family and friends connect and worship around the world wide web, grace and peace be unto you from God who loves us as both mother and father, and Jesus Christ who always and alone is our resurrected, our risen, our reigning, and our returning redeemer. This is another beautiful day that the Lord has made, and what a special day it is as we gather on this last day of 2023. There ought to be at least somebody on every pew who knows that you've only made it by the grace and the mercy of God, that God has been faithful, that God has gone exceeding and abundantly above all that you could ask or think, that God has made ways out of no ways, that God has held you together in moments when life was pulling you apart, that God surprised you with blessings along the way, that God's been better to you than you've been to yourself. So let me pause again. Is there anybody in this space today who is grateful that God has seen you through another year's journey, that God's grace, God's hand, God's protection has been on you through the ups and downs of life? Come on, don't fool me for a little bit. Can we just pause right now and set the atmosphere for worship and thank God for what the Lord and only the Lord has done? If you know there's some things that only God can give credit for, there's some mountains, there's some sickness, there's some storms that only the Lord has brought you through, it's not, is it all right to give God a little glory today? Is it all right just to thank God for what the Lord has done? Hallelujah and praise be to God. Happy New Year, Alfred Street. Here we gather in this space today, grateful that God's love, God's protection, God's providential care over our lives has navigated us through situations we knew were coming and ones that absolutely surprised us. But yet here we are by the grace of God. You know, the children of Israel had a habit of naming places after what they had seen God do. There's one place they named Ebenezer. If you ever see the name Ebenezer, it's not just the name of the Baptist church down the street. <laughs> Ebenezer is where the children of Israel paused and said, thus far, the Lord has brought us. Whenever you say Ebenezer, you're realizing God brought me here. Ebenezer's recognition that every step led to this place that God was directing me. And one of the great moments of faith is to be able to see how God has been shifting and moving you to the place where you are today. 
And I pray that as we come to the end of this year that we all have had some Ebenezer moments in 2023 where the Lord has brought us. As we celebrate and give thanks to God, one of the ways that we do it is in the breaking of bread and the sharing of cup. At Alpha Street, we have what is called an open communion that we invite all those who've accepted and believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior to reverence this moment with us. When you came in today, prayerfully, you received the elements of the Lord's Supper. If you did not, would you be so kind as to just wave a hand as we have deacons who would joyfully serve you even now? If, we're if you're watching online, won't you take this moment to lay hold of the bread and the cup that you will use to join us in this moment of reverence and remembrance and the breaking of bread and sharing of cup? The Bible reminds us that all of us are sinners, that daily we fall short of the glory of God. The prophet Isaiah put it like this, that all of your righteousness is nothing other than a filthy rag in the eyes of God. This year, I know many of us have tried our best. Prayerfully, you've grown and deepened your walk with the Lord. But we all have a life littered with mistakes, faults, sins, and failures. But the good news is that the Lord says you can leave them here today and walk into something new. One of my favorite passages of scripture is Romans chapter 5, verse 20, which simply says that wherever sin abounds, great, you, you know that one? Grace abounds that much more. In simple mathematics, grace is always greater than sin. That's why we're grateful that in the grace of God, we have another chance to leave behind the consequences, leave behind the guilt, leave behind the shame of what we know we failed in and walk into the newness that God offers us in Christ Jesus. Paul put it like this, that if any person be in Christ, they are a new creature. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. You cannot have a new year until you let go of your old sin. That's why we break this bread and eat it together. This bread which represents the broken body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who alone is our Christ. Crucified, dead, buried, resurrected, ascended into heaven, sitting at the right hand of God, making intercessions for our sins, and one day returning. This we believe as we break bread and eat together. Without the shedding of blood, there can be for no forgiveness of sins. You can't detach yourself from your sin by simply making a resolution to do better. What detaches you is the forgiveness God offers only in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. This cup represents the memorial of the blood shed on the cross of Calvary for the forgiveness of our sins and the beginning of a new place with God. Let us drink together. Pray with me, family. God, in your amazing grace, we receive what you offer to us in our faith. The forgiveness of our sins, the eternal security of our soul's salvation, the precious indwelling of the Holy Spirit to live a life that is pleasing in your sight, and the joyful assignment we have to share the transformative love of Jesus with others. Lord, as you have loved us, may we seek to love one another. And in the same way you have forgiven us, may we forgive each other. This we ask in the name of Jesus, our Christ. Amen. As we welcome each and every one of you into worship on this last Sunday of the year, I want to welcome especially our, our delegate from the 19th District here in Virginia, our brother Roja Henson is here. Roja, if you would stand, we want to welcome you to Alpha Street on today and thank God and pray for you. We welcome you and pray God's wisdom upon you as you continue to sit to delegate that which is an equity and justice for God's people here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. I didn't recognize earlier, and we had them come take a photo, but we've got a whole bunch of folk from Philadelphia here. 
I'm gonna ask them to stand one more time. They rode a charter bus down this morning to come and sit in Alfred Street Baptist Church. I'm gonna ask all our Philadelphia folk to stand. Welcome, welcome, and welcome. We are blessed to have you and to receive you. I want to give you word that in August of next year, as God will give us grace and mercy, we're preparing to bring Alfred Street to Philadelphia on a Wednesday night experience. You'll hear more about it, but we want you to bring family and friends out. We're taking Alfred Street on the road, and we look forward to starting in Philadelphia, where we know we got a good, a good base of folk who love the Lord and worship with us, and we pray for them, because many of them are Eagles fans, and we pray that God's blessings and... And God's forgiveness be upon them. We, we're all allowed a few mistakes in life. Amen. Um, you all, please don't forget, we're going to be back here tonight at 7 p.m. as we bring in our New Year with our New Year's Eve worship service. I invite you to join us both in this space and online. That we may have a fresh time of worshiping and giving thanks to God one more again before we move into this new year. When we move into the new year, please be mindful that every Saturday we will gather here and online at 9 a.m., for Seminary Saturdays. During the month of January, we invite professionals and scholars to come and share with us from a particular area of study. This year, we're taking a look at the gospel and social justice, particularly how we as Christians should prepare ourselves for what is happening not only within our nation, but within our world. I pray that you are wide awake and know that 2024 is going to be a critical year for this land that will have rippling effects across the globe. I want to make certain we go into 2024 understanding our responsibility here at home, as well as getting perspective on some of the tensions in the Middle East. If you've ever really want to have a clearer understanding of what is happening and why, with some of the historical and religious background, we invite you to share in with us on Saturdays in January, beginning at 9 o'clock. And then finally, if you will, Seek 2024 is here, January 22nd through February 11th. We're going on a consecrated corporate time of prayer and fasting for 21 days, not just as a church family, but extended to all those in the body of Christ who want to join in with us, believing that when the people of God called by God, humble themselves and pray and seek God's face, that God still hears from heaven. God still heals our land and God still will answer our prayers. That journey will begin again on the 22nd of January. Last year, some more than 12,000 people signed up in Covenant with us. I want to let you know that Covenant registration for SEEK will begin on January 2nd. It's just our way of knowing who's connected with us and our way of making certain we get you the devotional materials, the SEEK playlist, and all the testimonies of what is happening during our fast. And so if you would prepare to register online beginning on the 2nd of January as we move into and prepare for our time of corporate prayer and fasting. That's all I want to lift up in your hearing today because I'd like to have a special time of prayer before we move into this new year. God has seen us through a year that's had both some ups and some downs, mountains and valleys, high places and low moments. But by the grace of God, we are here. I don't know of any better way to worship God than to come to God in humble submission of who God is and to have a moment of prayer. In our time of prayer, you can remain seated. You can stand. You may feel called to the altar. Whatever you want to do, let's get in that place of prayer as we get ready to come to the Lord. The altar's open for those who would come. Others may remain seated or stand, however God would lead. But let's come and give thanks to God and lay our burdens at the altar of God. are assuming our place of prayer if there's somebody heavy on your heart 
Won't you name them even now as we get ready to bow? Let's pray together. Amazing God of grace and unfailing mercy, we bow before you today realizing that it is only of your mercies we are not consumed. Lord, please don't ever let us think that we navigated ourselves through this year, that we made the right decisions that got us from January to December that we were connected to the right people who saw us from day one to day last. It is only of your mercies that we are not consumed. Our brother Paul said that we don't have to be anxious, but in all things with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, we can make our requests known to you. Paul put the thanksgiving at the end, but God, we want to start our prayer by saying thank you. Thank you, God, for your hand that was upon us. Thank you, oh God, for opening doors we didn't even know we could walk through. Thank you, God, that the diagnosis that caused our heart to fear has been met with grace that is sufficient. Thank you, oh God, that someone at the altar today has been living with a thorn all year long and still has joy. Thank you, O oh God, that in those moments when we didn't know how we were going to make it, all we could do was trust in you and somehow, some way, God, you handled that thing. Thank you, O oh God, that we asked for a little and you blessed with a lot. As a matter of fact, O oh God, we want to thank you for what we asked for that you said no to. Because I can look back now and know that what I wanted wasn't what was best for me. God, you loved us so much and care for us so much and know so much about us. Lord, that you ushered us into places that we never thought we'd be in. Carried us through situations and valleys we never know we'd walk through. So God, we say thank you. We humble our hearts. We get off of our high horses. We stop patting ourselves on the back. And God, we say thank you. I'm not ashamed to give you glory. I'm not too lifted up to acknowledge that you are the source of my strength. Lord, that in you we have lived and moved and in you we have our being. And as grandma used to say, if it had not been for the Lord on our side. God, we stand on this December 31 and realize that a whole lot has changed since January 1. Some people who were with us are no longer with us. And you've walked some of us through the valley of the shadow of death. We've had to watch children go prodigal astray and you brought them back. We've wrestled with things in our hearts that were not pleasing in your sight, and God, you've taught us what deliverance looks like. You've proven that when we call on your name, you never fail us. Lord, someone today thanks you because you worked some things together for good. Somebody thanks you because the weapon was formed, but it, it didn't prosper. We thank you, O oh God, because there was someone who meant it for evil, and you proved that you were greater than their intentions and you worked it together for our good. Someone had to sit with a doctor who said, I didn't know and don't know what's going to happen, but we found out that you're still Jehovah Rapha. You are still the God who heals our every disease. Some of us, Lord, have lost some relationality along the way and found ourselves alone at night only to realize you are the God that neither sleeps nor slumbers. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for keeping us another year. We come to the end of this year not only with thanksgiving, God, but if the truth be told, there's still some burdens we're carrying, some things that we need you to touch, like right now. 
God, I want to believe that a new year is on the way, but I got a sneaky feeling that I'm going to have some of the same problems. So God, I'm asking you to touch my heart right now. Look, there's someone we've been praying for a long time, but I'm not giving up. I'm asking you to touch their heart right now. Some situations, Lord, that haven't changed, but I'm not giving up on you. I'm asking you to touch it right now. God, as we approach this new year, as we approach this next season, as we approach this next chapter of our lives, God, be the author. Be the finisher, God. Write the story, and may it be well with our soul. God, I thank you for this neighbor on my left and my right. Thank you that I'm not in this thing alone. I thank you for our church family, God, that, that, that Sunday came and the doors were opened and the people gathered and, and I could come in and like, I, like I'm really who I am, struggling with what I'm struggling with and find someone who didn't judge me but encouraged me to believe that God is still faithful. Lord, thank you for the Alfred Street Baptist Church family. Thank you for allowing us to touch the hungry and to clothe the naked and to visit the incarcerated and to minister to the brokenhearted. Thank you, God, for calling me to service and putting me in relationship. Thank you, oh God, for the brother and sister whose hand I hold right now. I don't know your name, but I do know this about you. You need God. And I'm praying that God would descend into your circumstance and situation right now in a mighty way. God, show yourself strong. May God bless you. May God make his face to shine upon you. May God be gracious to you. May God hear your prayers. May God answer by going exceeding and abundantly above all that you could ask or think. I'm asking God to blow your mind. I'm asking God to reveal his hand. I'm asking God to put it in your family. I'm asking God to rain down grace upon you. I want God to bless you. Bless her, God. Bless him, God. Hold him, God. Walk with her, God. Strengthen him, God. Lift her up, oh God. Bless my neighbor. Bless him, God. With what they don't even know they stand in need of. And God, as the saints would say, we'll be careful to give your name all the glory, the honor, and the praise. Because you are the God that brought us through 23 and the God that's got 24 in store. Lord, we walk into this new year with heads held high. We walk into it with souls and spirits that are encouraged. We walk into it with hope and expectation that greater is on the way. Eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard the good things God has in store for you. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, to prosper you and to bring your future and a hope. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. In the name of of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, I just want, I just want to thank. Let's say it as we go back to our seats.
good manners just to thank you. God did what God didn't have to do. So I say thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. I just want, I just want to thank. Oh, I just want to thank. I just want to thank. I just want to thank. I just want to
I'm safe with you. I never want to be without you. I'm safe, I'm safe with, with you. Oh, yes, I am. So safe. And I never want to be. And I never want to be without you. There's love. Your love is better than life. It's unconditional. I it keeps me safe. I never, I never wanna be without you. There's peace with you. I am safe. so grateful that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. That you never have to live your life without God. If you feel like your life is void of the presence of God, it's not because God has forsaken you. But maybe it's because you've abandoned God. Lord, I pray today that by the preaching and teaching of your word, that someone's heart will long for you again. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. In the name of the incarnate word, Jesus, our Christ, we do pray. Amen. I'm going to invite you in this service and really throughout the rest of this day to hang out with me in the 27th chapter of the book of Acts. The Acts of the Apostles, the fifth book of the New Testament. The 27th chapter is the next to the last one. But today I'm going to ask your liberty to read a portion of scripture beginning in verse number 21 out of the Common English Bible. 
for emphasis and clarity's sake. It's our custom to ask those who are physically able to join us as we stand to reverence the reading of the word of God in Acts chapter 21, 27, excuse me, beginning in verse number 21. Acts 27, beginning in 21. Listen for the word of the Lord. For a long time, no one had eaten. Paul stood up among them and said, men, you should have complied with my instructions not to sell from Crete. Then we would have avoided this damage and loss. Now I urge you to be encouraged. Not one of your lives will be lost, though we will lose the ship. Last night an angel from the God to whom I belong and whom I worship stood beside me and the angel said, do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar. Indeed, God has also graciously given you everyone sailing with you. Be encouraged, men. I have faith in God that it will be exactly as he told me. However, we must run aground on some island. On the 14th night, we were being carried across the Adriatic Sea. Around midnight, the sailors began to suspect that land was near. They dropped a weighted line to take soundings and found the water to be about 120 feet deep. After proceeding a little farther, we took soundings again and found the water to be about 90 feet deep. Afraid that we might run aground somewhere on the rocks, they hurled out four anchors from the stern and began to pray for daylight. The sailors tried to abandon the ship by lowering the lifeboat into the sea, pretending they were going to lower anchors from the bow. Paul said to the centurion and his soldiers, unless they stay in the ship, you cannot be saved from peril. The soldiers then cut the ropes to the lifeboat and let it drift away. Just before daybreak, Paul urged everyone to eat. He said, this is the 14th day you've lived in suspense and you've not had a bite to eat. I urge you to take some food. Your health depends on it. None of you will lose a single hair from his head. After he said these things, he took bread, gave thanks to God in front of them all, then broke it and began to eat. Everyone was encouraged and took some food. In all, there were 276 of us on the ship. And when they had eaten as much as they wanted, they lightened the ship by throwing the grain into the sea. Hear the words of verse 22 again. Now I urge you to be encouraged. Not one of your lives will be lost, though we will lose the ship. Do me a favor, I need you to turn to one neighbor with a little attitude in your face and give them the title of the sermon. Tell them, neighbor, neighbor. oh neighbor, I will, I will survive. survive. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I will survive. As you know, the 27 books of the New Testament are divided into four different genres. We have four Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which are really sermonic stories of the life of Jesus Christ. There are 21 letters written by Paul, Peter, James, Jude, John, and some unnamed fellows. There's one apocalyptic revelation of the apostle John. But the book of Acts written by the same author as the Gospel of Luke, with its 28 chapters, is the only book of the New Testament that is considered historical. Zeno will tell you the reason it's a history book is that it chronicles the 35-year infancy history of the story and the spread of Christianity from 29 A.D., to 64 AD. The table of contents for this history book 
is actually given by the words of Jesus in chapter 1, verse 8, where he says to his apostles that you will receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and even to the end of the world. And as such, the book of Acts, with its history, traces the movement of Christianity from Jerusalem to the end of the world. The first few chapters focus on the apostles in Jerusalem and their contention they have with the Pharisees and the council that killed Jesus. In chapter 9, we get the conversion of Saul to Paul. And by chapter 13, the entirety of the book of Acts is focused on Paul and his journey to preach Jesus to the Gentiles in all the Greco-Roman world, ending up in Rome itself, where he preaches Jesus until he's killed by the emperor Nero. Paul's road to Rome is really one of the most critical accounts of a travel that you can find in all the Bible. It starts in chapter 21, and I would encourage you to read that in your devotional time when you're at home this week, because you will find that Paul's road to Rome is a story of of how God really orders our steps. It's an account of a God who says, despite whatever you're going through, I know the plan I have for you. Chapter 21 through 28 bears witness that that we serve a God who is able to work all things together for our good. Even when it does not seem that it is part of the plan of God, God has a way of putting and ordering and structuring things together. That by the time you get to the last chapter of the season of your struggle, it all makes some sense. When you go home and you read, let let me give you a little context so you can understand the content of this road to Rome that Paul is on. In chapter 21, Paul is in Jerusalem, and his presence causes a riot. Because not only is he preaching Jesus, but the priests have accused him of violating temple law by bringing a Gentile, a non-Jew, into the heart of the temple. Facing these accusations, Paul, for the first time, stands up and defends himself by telling his testimony of how the Lord called him. The riot continues. The Jews take hold of him, and they start to beat him. The Roman soldiers who are guarding over the area get word of the riot going down. They come in and break it up and snatch Paul out of the hand of the Jews. Paul then, for the second time, in front of the Romans, gets up and tells his testimony of what the Lord has done in his life. The Roman soldiers, wanting to appease the Jews, arrest Paul, and they decide that they want to torture him. To which Paul then survives because he invokes his right as a Roman citizen. He reminds them... You can't lay a hand on me without a proper trial. A few days later, the same chief priests and Pharisees come to make their case against Paul. And now Paul, for the third time, stands up and tells his testimony of what the Lord has done. And this time, Elaine, he he saves himself because he causes a division between the Sadducees and the Pharisees. He realizes that those who are accusing him are made up of two different groups, Pharisees who believe in the resurrection and Sadducees who don't. And because they don't believe in the resurrection, that's why they are sad, you see. (laughs) And after causing a division, the Bible says that 40 devout Jews took an oath that they would neither eat nor sleep until Paul was dead. They set up an ambush to kill Paul, but Paul's nephew gets word of it. 
He comes to Paul, and Paul tells him, go tell Felix, the new governor, who's replaced Pilate, of what these Jews are up to. So he tells Felix, and Felix snatches Paul and brings Paul to his his house, and, and Paul now for the fourth time stands and gives a testimony to Felix of what the Lord has done. Felix says to him, too much learning has made you crazy. He locks Paul up in jail for two years, Jamal hoping that, that Paul's followers would give him a bribe to let Paul go. Felix is replaced by a brother named Festus. Festus brings Paul, and Paul now, for the fifth time, stands up and tells his testimony of what the Lord has done. Festus says uh, that, that I don't know what to do with you, and Paul says, I demand to go to Rome and be tried by the emperor. While Festus is trying to figure it out, King Agrippa, a descendant of Herod the Great shows up at Festus' house and Festus brings Paul out and now for the sixth time, Paul stands up and gives a testimony of what the Lord has been doing in his life. His testimony is so powerful that Agrippa says, you almost persuade me to become a Christian. And Agrippa says that you would have been free but you appealed to go to Rome. And now the paperwork is in, and so you've got to go to Rome to stand trial in front of the emperor. That's where we are in chapter 27. That Paul, with some other prisoners, with soldiers watching over them, and experienced sailors are making their way from Judea to Rome. On one leg of their journey, around about October in that year, Paul warned them that we ought not get on the ship because winter is coming. Where my game of throne? <laughs> and Paul knows what the sailors should know, that winter storms are on the way and we will not make it across the Adriatic Sea. But in hustle and haste to get there, they ignore Paul, they get on the ship, and they begin to sail. And sure enough, they encounter a storm. And this ain't no regular storm. This storm is threatening the ship. Paul has a dream where an angel of God comes to him and says, you're going to make it, but the ship won't. He's got to tell these sailors and these soldiers and these prisoners that not only are we facing a storm, but now we're facing a shipwreck. Storm and shipwreck. Storm and shipwreck. Storm and shipwreck. Storms are one thing. Shipwrecks are something else. Storms may delay your journey. Shipwrecks keep you from making it to your destination. Storms you just got to hold on through. Shipwrecks leave you with nothing to hold on to. Storms pass over. Shipwrecks make you start over. When you survive a storm, you're just glad you made it. But when you survive a shipwreck, you wonder how you're going to make it after you made it. Storms make you ask, why God? Shipwrecks make you wonder if there is a God. Can't 
cancer can be a storm. But losing a loved one because of it can be a shipwreck. Troubling your marriage, that's a storm. Landing in divorce court can be a shipwreck. Having jealous co-workers is a storm. Losing your job because of a story they told can be a shipwreck. Uh, having rumors spread on you is a storm. Having to go viral on the shade room and having to stand in your pulpit and deny that you were even there with the Negro, that can be a... Watching your child struggle is a storm. Watching them become addicted is a shipwreck. God letting you have the thorn is a storm, but God refusing to remove it can be a shipwreck. Storms and shipwrecks. And here in chapter 27, Paul and the prisoners and the soldiers and the sailors are facing what some of you have been through this entire year. Storms and a couple shipwrecks. If you're grown and you've grown up, we expect storms. But nobody ever told me a shipwreck was on the agenda. God, if you let me know the ship wasn't going to make it, I wouldn't have got on this joker in the first place. If I had known it was going to wreck, I never would have said I do. If I had known that job was going to cost me that much of my life, I never would have filled out the application. If I had known she was going to betray me, I never would have befriended her in the first place. If I knew you were that crazy, I never would have responded to your direct message. If I would have known, I expect storms, but I didn't sign up for shipwrecks. The angel comes to Paul and says, not only is there a storm, the ship is going to wreck, but be of good news, good courage. The ship won't make it, but you will. And as soon as Paul hears the word that the ship won't make it, but that everyone on the ship will, he has an assignment on his life to encourage the sailors, the soldiers, and the prisoners that yes, there's a storm, and yes, the ship won't make it, but God's got some good news. You will survive. And I came by on this last Sunday in 2023 with a Pauline assignment on my life to give you some good news and encourage you in the midst of your storms, in the midst of the shipwreck, to let you know that God has declared the ship may not make it, the job may let you go, the marriage may not last, the money won't bring it there, but the good news from God is that you will. I don't know who I came to preach to today. But I came to teach you a new song. It's not Amazing Grace. It's not Blessed Assurance. It's from that gospel artist, Diana Ross. Oh, no, not I. <laughs> I will survive. That's the good news for someone going into this next year. No matter what storm comes your way, no matter what shipwreck you face, no matter what disappointment is on the agenda, God says on this last Sunday before the next Sunday, you will If you believe it, just how I will survive. Now, now, in order to survive, which what Paul teaches them, I want to share with you from this text some strategies of surviving shipwrecks and storms. Number one, if you're going to survive the storm, if you're going to survive the shipwreck, you've got to learn to surrender to the sovereignty of God. 
Oh, don't shout too prematurely. You may not like what I'm about to say. When you read them on this ship, Dr. Judy, you'll find from verse 13 to 20 that these sailors have done everything they know how to do to keep the ship together. The Bible says that they tried everything they've been taught. They, they, they put the sail up and, and tried to follow the wind in a different direction. That didn't work. They took the cargo and threw it overboard to lighten the ship. That didn't work. They tried to let the anchor down and just let the ship float, and that didn't work. They even took ropes and tried to tie them underneath the ship and think that they could hold the rope together and that the rope would hold the ship together. They did everything they knew how to do only for Paul to tell them, God said, the ship ain't going to make it. You've done everything you know how to do, and this is still going to fall apart. You've given it your all. You've gone 110. You put your whole heart in it. You did everything you thought you knew how to do. And at some point, you have to accept that all you can do is all you can do. Mm. At some point, you've got to accept that there's nothing else you can do that's going to change the outcome of what you're going through. You, you've made every call you can make. You've reached out to every friend you know. You went to every therapist and counselor you could afford. You've taken every medication they prescribed. You've done everything you know how to do. And at some point, you've got to accept that your best ain't enough. You see how quiet it gets here because we are under the mindset and the disillusion that somehow we are in control, that, that if I just try harder, if I just beg more, if I just cry a little more, if I just plead a little more, if I compromise myself and move on my ethic and my, 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 my center of my religion, my righteousness with God, if I just give up all that, that I can somehow control the outcome. And one of the most difficult lessons of life is to find out you ain't in control. Uh, uh, it, 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 it gets real quiet over here because we think we are in control. And these sailors quickly find out after doing everything we know how to do, it's still not going down the way we want. And so watch what the Bible says. The Bible says that they let the anchors down and they began to pray for daylight. Yeah, yeah. Now, now, pause. Let me tell you, verse 20 will remind you that they haven't seen daylight in 14 days. In 14 days, they've not seen the sun. So now that they realize the ship is about to break, they anchor down and they begin to pray for nothing other than daylight. God, bring a new day. God, let the storm pass over. God, move the clouds out the way. God, let me see the sun shine again. They have literally reached the place where they recognize that we are not in control. And all we can do is let down our anchors and pray and surrender this ship to whatever God is going to allow to go down. I told you, be quiet. You don't like coming to the realization that sometimes what you want is not what God wills. Oh, the religious folk don't like that. Because someone misled you to think that whatever you pray for, God's going to say yes to. That whatever you ask God to do, God is going to do. That whatever you want, God will will. Baby girl, brother man, that ain't the way it works. There are moments 
when you've got to surrender to the fact that what God wills is not what you want. That how God is answering ain't what you asked for. And in that moment, I want you to remember that the primary purpose of prayer is not to change the outcome. The primary purpose of prayer is to give you enough faith that God's going to bring you through whatever God is allowing to happen in your life. Let me say that again. That the reason you pray is not to change the will of God, but to increase your faith that the God you're praying to is going to pull you through whatever he's allowing to go down in your life. The primary purpose of prayer is not to change the outcome. It's to increase my faith that God will hold me together while God ushers me through this storm. You can pray and the storm still come. You can pray and the ship still not make it. And here's what Paul says. He said, but you know what? I trust God. Yes. Beloved, that, that, that's the biggest statement of your faith. I trust God. Not that I just believe God is going to do what I want God to do, but, but I trust God. Yes. Not that everything's going to turn out the way I ask, but I trust God. Not that God is going to remove every thorn and save every funeral and bring every blessing and let the sun shine all day long. No, I just trust that God has a plan, that God is in control, that God is working things out, that God is arranging and fixing and doing something that I cannot see right now. Paul says, I trust God. And notice, let me tell you why Paul trusts God. Because on this ship, he looked back from chapter 27 to everything that began in chapter 21 and found out God's been good. Uh, they arrested me, and God brought me through. They tried to stone me, and God brought me through. They tried to manipulate me financially, and God brought me through. They mocked me, and God brought me through. They falsely incarcerated me, and God brought me through. And Paul realizes that every time, y'all, I love this, that he got up to tell his testimony. Watch this, Theron. He had another chapter to it. His testimony, the first time, don't look like his testimony the last time. Because every time he testified, God had done something else that he had to add to the testimony of what God has been doing in his life. Why does God allow Paul to go through so much? Because he's on his way to Rome. God says, I'm going to stand you in front of the emperor. And when you get in front of the emperor, I don't want you to stand up there and not have no testimony of how good I've been to you. I don't want you to get up there and all you know is Jesus wept. I want you to stand in that place and talk about how you almost died, but God kept you. How your enemies tried to take you out, but God kept you. How you didn't have no money, but God kept you. How you didn't know which way to go, but God kept you. That every struggle was preparing you for a great place. You were going to stand and testify about the goodness of God. You want to know why God allowed so many storms and so many shipwrecks so that when God gets you where God wants you to be, you can open your mouth and tell folk with all assurance, I know what God is able to do because God carried me. Um, it wasn't what I prayed for. But I trusted him. Yeah. It didn't go down the way I asked, but I trusted him. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
This isn't how I was going to do it, but I trusted him. Um, I was hesitant to go see the new color purple. I know it's a great cast, but I am a color purple purist. And I, I am... I am committed to the original movie. And, and so often, when they do a remake, they mess up the original. And I didn't want to go see the new one because I had heard that there were some twists and, and some changes to the original I was committed to. And I don't know if I want to like seeing you change what I'm committed to. I, I, I didn't know if I like anyone other than Oprah being Miss Seeley. I mean, Whoopi, I, 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 need, I need Danny Glover to say, could be. Could be not. I'm going to get mad. If Suge don't say we's married now, I, I, I got to see it the way I'm committed to. And I didn't want to see the movie because they told me there are going to be some changes to it. And while I'm debating whether to see it, I catch an interview with Oprah, who's the producer of the movie, and just what she says. She said, in order to remake it, we had to go to Steven Spielberg, who was the original producer, and get his permission and she said, I told him I was going to make some changes. And Spielberg said to Oprah, I trust this story in your hands. It may not be the way I directed it, but I trust the story in your hands. She said she went to Alice Walker and Alice... You can trust the story in Oprah's head. It, it may not be the way you want it. It may go down different than what you were committed to. It may not look how you prayed, but we trust the story in your hand. Can anybody tell someone how to make it in 2024? That no matter what you pray for, no matter what you ask God to do, no matter how you want it to look, trust your story in God's hands and know that God's will will bring about a product. God, God is directing your story. God is producing your film. God is ordering your steps. God is arranging your glory. God is preparing you. But you gotta surrender to his will. If you're gonna survive the shipwreck, you've gotta surrender to the sovereignty of God. Can I give you number two? If you're going to survive the shipwreck, uh, you've got to partner with the people of God. Boy, I'm, let me hustle through this. Watch this. God tells Paul, listen, I got you and everyone sailing with you. Huh? So, so watch what happens. Bible says that these sailors prayed. And, 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 and watch this, Ty. After the amen, the sailors tried to sneak off the boat. <laughs> Bible says that, that they pretended to say, we're going to go let the anchor down. And they let the lifeboat down. And they were trying to get off the ship because they said, we don't need the prisoners and, and the soldiers. We're just going to go on as sailors. They're, they're trying to get off the ship. Now, watch what happened, Sharice. And Paul sees what's happening. Paul goes and tells the soldiers, if the sailors get off the ship, we all going to die. So the soldiers go find the sailors who are trying to sneak off the ship, and they cut the lifeboats off and let the lifeboats float away. Now, you're so holy on Sunday, I need you to think about how it really went down on the ship. Because here we are trying to get off, and Paul then gone and ran his mouth. And now the soldiers have cut off the boat, 
and we all stuck on this ship that's about to be destroyed. One, because the soldiers cut off the ship that the sailors are going to get in because Paul ran his mouth. Think about how ugly the scene got. Because if I'm a sailor, now I want to kill Paul because you opened your mouth and now I'm stuck on a ship that's about to be destroyed. Uh, uh. Uh -huh. There's a scholar who said that the reason Paul told on the sailors is because he knew that if the sailors got off the ship, that the ship wouldn't make it without the sailors. And the, the scholar argued that Paul's trying to save his life. I think differently. Paul's not trying to save the ship. He's trying to save the sailors. Because Paul knows God told me that the anointing is on my life. And the anointing on my life is going to be a blessing in your life. And if you get off the ship and get away from me, you're going to lose the blessing that God has in store for I don't know who needs to just shout an early amen, but the blessing is on your life. And the blessing on your life is so strong. And the grace of God on your life is so powerful that it flows over to those who are connected to you. And the problem with the sailors is that they don't understand when you are in a storm, when you're facing a shipwreck, you need to be connected to people who are connected to God. Um, I'm trying to get in. When you're facing your storm and facing your shipwreck, who you're connected to matters. And the problem with too many sailors is that we are connected to folk who ain't connected enough to God. You need somebody in your life whose connection to God is stronger than your own. Oh, -wee. you need someone who prays stronger than you do. You need someone who knows the word more than you do. You need someone filled with the, the Holy Ghost more than you are. Beloved, that's, that's, that's why, yes, I tell you, you need to join a church. Uh, you can't do this thing just sitting at home, flipping from Wheeler Avenue to Alfred Street to the Potter's House to Trinity United. No, you need to connect yourself to some people who will encourage you. Because while you're trying to get off the ship, somebody's got to remind you God is able. While you're thinking about killing yourself, someone's got to lay hands on you and rebuke the devil. When you're thinking about walking away, you need someone to remind you that God's got his hand on you. Um, now watch, I know what happens. The minute I tell you you need to join church and be connected to people who are connected to God, watch what the devil will do. The devil will tell you the church folk ain't no good. The devil will tell you church ain't nothing but gossip and, and mess and ego. The church folk ain't no good. And he's right. I've been pastoring 25 years. I'm telling you, church folk ain't no good. Preachers ain't no good. But watch the text. Here's my shout. The Bible gives us a count of how many people are on the ship. 276. There are 276 folk on the ship, and Paul is the only one connected to God. You miss it. 276, but everybody going to be all right because one person is connected to God. Okay, I'll try it again. Uh, um, everybody might not be no good, but if there's one person who loves the Lord, we're going to be all right. 
If there's one usher with joy in her heart, if there's one alto who just wants to sing to the glory of God, if there's just one preacher who walks the walk and talks the talk, if there's one person on your pew who really loves God, your whole pew is going to be all right. Uh, I stopped by on this last Sunday to find one person who trusts God with all your heart. One person who knows God's been so good to me that I'll give God whatever he wants. One person who takes God at his word. If that's you, nudge somebody tell them I'm the one. I'm the one God is using. I'm the one that trusts God. I'm the one that loves God. I'm the one. Oh. Okay, okay. Um. Ooh. Okay. Y'all, uh, do me a favor. Y'all pray for me. Uh, I got to preach two more times today. But, but I feel... You got to surrender to the sovereignty of God. You got to partner with the people of God. But watch this last one, and this... This is about to get me happy. You've got to learn how to give glory to God. Um, you cannot survive the storm if you don't know how to give God thanks. Watch what the Bible says, and I'm done. I'm so glad it's in Scripture. Uh, the Bible says that Paul told him, y'all need to eat because you're going to need your strength to survive. And then watch verse 35. Here it is in the Bible says that Paul took bread and uh, he gave thanks to God in the presence of everybody. He ate it and then watch this and then everybody was encouraged. Okay, I'll try it again. Uh, he took bread. He gave thanks to God in the presence of everybody. And when they saw Paul give thanks to God, they were encouraged. I'll try one more again. Uh, he gave thanks to God. And when everybody saw him give thanks to God, they were encouraged that they would survive. Because giving God thanks is critical to your survival in the storm you're going through. Learning how to praise God is necessary for surviving the shipwreck. Okay, I, I knew I know it's gonna be quiet because I know y'all. And this highly educated HBCU crowd <laughs> tends to think that praise is the emotional, irrational response of the spiritually charismatic. Um, that 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 kind of stuff belongs down there at that, that Pentecostal church, that, that that's for the folk that, that don't make the six figures, that that's for the folk that, that still ride the metro, that's for the folk that ain't got no degrees on the wall, that's for the folk that, that don't know no better because it don't take all of that. Can I preach to your bougie, educated, done made itself? Praise is not irrational. Praise is the logical response to how I get where I am. Watch it, watch it. Here it is, I got to move. He gives thanks to God and watch how he learns and teaches them how to praise. The Bible says that he gave thanks to God before the sun rose. Oh, uh, you missed it. It's dark. They're still in the storm. They've been praying for the sun to rise. But before the sun rises, he still gives God thanks. Because Paul said, I ain't got to wait for a new day to dawn. I don't have to wait for God to answer my prayer. I can praise God after I say amen. Now I lay me down to sleep. Praise the Lord. Our Father which art in heaven, Praise the Lord. Is there anybody here 
that can thank God before the answer comes, before the yes comes, before the day breaks. I praise him right now. But wait. Not only does he praise him in the dark, he praises him for the bread. Not a whole meal, just some bread. Not steak and potatoes, just some bread. Not fried chicken and mac and cheese. All I got is some bread. But when I look at the little bread that the Lord has given me, I can thank God for the little things. I wish I had about five folk in the Alpha Tree Church that can thank God for the daily bread that God gave you in 2023. Thank you, God, for the little things. Thank you, God, for waking me up every morning. Thank you, God, for keeping me in my right mind. Thank you, God, for watching over my family. Are there any bread thanksgivings? Anybody can thank God for the little things. I, I got to go, y'all, but I sure feel good. I praise him before he answers. I thank him for the little things. But here's the one that makes me holler. The Bible says that he broke bread and he gave thanks in the presence of everybody else. In the presence of prisoners, I gave thanks. In the presence of soldiers, I gave thanks. In the presence of sailors, I gave thanks. Because I don't wait till I'm surrounded by saints. I can thank him around prisoners. I can thank him around enemy. I can thank him on my job. I can thank him with my atheistic cousin. I can thank him around a bunch of non-believers. It ain't got to be Sunday. It ain't got to be the sanctuary. It ain't got to be saints. But whenever I think of the goodness of God and what the Lord has brought me through, I'll thank him on Monday. I'll bless him on Tuesday. Is there anybody here that doesn't wait till Sunday but can bless the Lord at all times? I gotta leave you, but there's so many folk that leave your shout till Sunday on the corner of Duke and Alfred. Can I tell you, Sunday is not the only time and the sanctuary is not the only place where I shout to God for how good God has been. As a matter of fact, what we do on Sunday is just practice for what I'm going to do on Monday. Um, um, my son plays basketball and he practices a lot. I tell him he's got to practice. And I gave him a slogan that you all know. You got to practice because practice makes perfect. His basketball coach told me to stop telling him that. He said practice doesn't make perfect. Because if you don't practice right, you won't perform right. Practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes permanent. That however you practice it is going to how you do it. So if you come on Sunday and you sit and practice with your mouth closed, that's all you're going to be able to do. If you sit with your legs crossed, upset that your neighbor stood up and now you can't see him. That's how you gonna respond on Monday. If you hear someone give God glory and it upsets you, that's what you're gonna do on Tuesday. So I came by as your sanctified coach to bring you into practice and say, let's practice praising God today like you gonna praise him tomorrow. Let's practice. Are 
Are you ready for practice? Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Are you ready for practice? Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Are you ready for practice? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Are you ready for practice? Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise God in the firmament. I'm just getting ready to thank God in the new year. I'm just getting ready to bless God next year. I'm just getting ready to thank him for the next blessing. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him.
for bringing us through storms and shipwrecks, teaching us to surrender to your will, partnering us with those who are connected to you, and, oh, God, teaching us how to give you glory. Now, God, as we face this new year, we go in with one thing on our minds. I will survive. In Jesus' name. Before you leave today, before you log off, you need to be connected to a church family. You can't do this on your own. I, I came to cut that rope off and keep you from getting off the ship. God has called you to this place. And to be connected, you must have Christ in your heart. We offer both those amazing experiences to you today to receive the Lordship of Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the body of his church. Amen. If you're watching online or if you prefer to do so after this service, just go to our website. There's a membership form there that allows us to reach out to you. Or even better, if you're in this space and you don't want this day to end and the new year to begin without Christ in your heart and connected to the people of God, after the benediction and the narthex at the altar, our sisters and brothers who we call deacons will be standing waiting to receive and to share with you all that God has in store. I wish you all a very, very happy new year. Don't forget, we'll be back here tonight at 7 o'clock with a, another message. No, no, it's not going to be the same sermon from today. Um, as we get ready to leave this place, won't you please be mindful to be faithful and obedient to whatever God will place upon your heart, especially when you come to the end of the year, that we might continue to glorify our Savior. Let's prepare to leave in the grace of God. Faithful, the sovereign, the omnipotent God, who alone is creator of heaven and earth. To the God who's made himself perfectly known to us in Jesus, who always and alone is our Christ, our loving Lord, our sacrificial Savior, our resurrected, risen, reigning, returning Redeemer. To the God who chooses to dwell in these earthen vessels of clay through the sustaining power, promise, presence, purpose, and person of the Holy Spirit. To the God who has brought us through storms and shipwrecks. To that God be all glory and majesty, dominion and power from now until eternity. And the redeemed of the Lord who loved the Lord and awaited his return said amen.
God and may the grace of God go with you. Happy New Year, family. Welcome to the Alfred Street Baptist Church. Now, here are the upcoming announcements for this week. We know that these are difficult and challenging times. We invite you to stay connected by participating in our online worship services and remain faithful in your giving online via our Alfred Street website, ASBC app, and on our text messaging system. If you have any questions about giving, please feel free to email our finance department at finance at alfredstreet.org. If you're interested in becoming a member of the historic Alfred Street Baptist Church, please email deacons with an S at alfredstreet.org or complete the membership form on our website or on our ASBC app. Are you looking for an incredible opportunity to share your musical talents? If so, look no further. Alfred Street Sanctified Symphony Orchestra is thrilled to announce that they are recruiting talented musicians like you to join their harmonious family. They're calling for all musicians to join them every Friday evening from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Send an email to sanctifiedsymphony at alfredstreet.org if interested. They can't wait to welcome you into the Alfred Street Baptist Church Sanctified Symphony Orchestra. Hey, Alfred Street. Versus is back in stock. Our Versus team has been working around the clock to create another batch of our popular Versus Bible-based trivia card game. And they're now available for purchase. That's right. Purchase your set of Versus cards today before we sell out again. Visit our website or ASBC app and be the first to get your hands on Versus, a Bible-based trivia game by Alfred Street Baptist Church. God has great plans for Alfred Street Baptist Church in 2024. We encourage each of you to make a contribution online above and beyond your regular tithes and offering by no later than Sunday, December 31st at 1159 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's right. In order for your tax-deductible contributions or donations to be included in our Finance Department's 2023 Tax Charitable Contribution Report, one must do the following. Make your donation or contribution online at alfredstreet.org or via our ASBC app or text to give system or our Realm membership giving system by no later than 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time on Sunday, December 31st, 2023. Or you can mail your check or money order to the church directly using our office address, 325 South Patrick Street, Alexandria, Virginia, 22314. All mail donations or contributions must be postmarked by no later than Sunday, December 31st, 2023. Any donations or contributions received on or after January 1st, 2024, regardless if it's online, via the U.S. mail, or during in-person worship experience, will be counted as a 2024 donation, regardless of what date has been placed on your check or money order. Please note that a 2023 date on a check or money order does not make it a 2023 donation. Only checks or money orders mailed to the church directly and postmarked by no later than Sunday, December 31st, 2023, will will be counted in our 2023 Tax Charitable Contribution Report. Please email finance at alfredstreet.org with any questions or concerns regarding your end of year giving. Alfred Street thanks you in advance for your unwavering support and generosity. What's up family, 2024 is knocking at the door. And I know some of y'all are going to go and celebrate on New Year's, but you'll have some time to recover because January 3rd at Alpha Street Baptist Church, meet me for our first Kaya of the year. Our theme is going to be around young adults thriving, but I'm of the belief that it's going to be impossible for us to thrive if we don't know what our purpose is. How has God blessed us to pour out into the world? So do me a favor, grab your brother. Grab your sister. I don't even care. Grab your mama and your grandmama and meet me at Alpha Street Baptist Church, 730 Worship Stars, and we'll have a conversation around purpose. I love y'all. I'll see y'all then.
Alfred Street family and friends, get ready. Seek 2024 is coming. That's right. Beginning January 22nd through February 11th, our own Reverend Dr. Howard John Wesley will lead Alfred Street in our annual church-wide corporate fast known as Seek 2024. Seek is a 21-day spiritual fast providing guidance to Christians from all around the world on how to practice self-discipline and to focus their entire attention on God. Again, Seek 2024 will commence on Monday, January 22nd and will end on Saturday, February 11th. Please note that our online registration for Seek will open on Tuesday, January 2nd, 2024. During this time, participants will be able to choose a physical, social, technological, and or financial fast. Everyone will have an opportunity to participate in our daily prayers, which will commence on the morning of January 22nd. A devotional journal filled with thought-provoking passages related to Scripture will also be available for download from the ASBC website once Seek 2024 begins. Pastor Wesley will curate a special Seek 2024 music playlist, which will be available to download from our website. And new for 2024, we'll be introducing an exercise component, a prayer walk every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. crossing the Woodrow Wilson Bridge in Alexandria, Virginia. Last year, Seek 2023 attracted nearly 12,000 participants. Remember, everyone who would like to participate in Seek 2024 must register online when registration opens on Tuesday, January 2nd, 2024. We look forward to connecting with you all through our Seek 2024 fast. We invite everyone to join us on Sunday, December 31st, New Year's Eve, for our in-person and live-streamed worship experience starting at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Doors will open at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. On Monday, January 1st, 2024, New Year's Day, please note that there will be no in-person worship experience. Alfred Street family and friends, we invite you to save the date. Everyone mark your calendars now and make plans to join us in person here at Alfred Street Baptist Church for Seminary Saturdays, happening online and in person every Saturday throughout the month of January in 2024 from 8.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. noon. Seminary Saturdays are Alfred Street's dynamic weekly Bible study series featuring a different and amazing guest scholar each Saturday who will deliver an insightful and informative lecture. You don't want to miss it. Alfred Street's Office of Christian Care and Counseling in conjunction with the Health and Well-Being Recovery Ministry present a bi-weekly peer support session virtually via Zoom. That's every first and third Wednesday from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Visit our website for the Zoom link information. The Recovery Ministry Peer Support Sessions will provide a safe and confidential environment to confront addictions, compulsive behaviors, and issues that interfere with a renewed relationship with God. Email recovery at alfredstreet.org for details. Calling all parents and guardians of children, youth, and teens, Alfred Street's Children and Youth Ministries are back. We're currently accepting registrations for Kid Street, Crossover, and Higher Ground. Visit our website to register your child or youth today. Alfred Street invites everyone to join the Joyce K. Peterson Handbell Ringers. They are thrilled to announce that their ensemble recruitment is now open. If you have a passion for music and a heart for worship, we invite you to be a part of this harmonious journey. If you can read music and are eager to contribute your talents to a musical ministry that touches souls, this is your moment to shine. For more info and to express your interest, please email handbell at alfredstreet.org. Our Faith Savage Gun tutorial ministry has a new home online. Communicate, learn, and stay informed all in one place. Visit our new webpage and check us out today at alfredstreet.org. Email tutorial at alfredstreet.org for details. Our Office of Christian Care and Counseling presents our hybrid, the Chronic Pain Support Group, facilitated by Mr. Jorge Wallace. This is a weekly support group designed to aid in the recovery needed from the emotional and spiritual debilitation of chronic pain and chronic illness. Recovery is defined as the ability to live peacefully, joyfully, and comfortably with ourselves and others. Chronic Pain Anonymous is a worldwide fellowship of individuals that understand the isolation, fear, and despair many have experienced when living with unpredictable and life-changing chronic illness and chronic pain. This support group will occur every Wednesday through December 20th. Email pastoralcounseling at alfredstreet.org for details. Our ASBC Village Study Guide is now available on the website to download. 
Be sure to check out a copy if you want to go deeper with Pastor Wesley's sermon prepared for you by the Villages of Alfred Street team. The guide is available online at alfredstreet.org. We invite everyone to join us for daily prayer call at 7 a.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. Join us in prayer and praise Monday through Friday only by dialing 425-436-6277, access code 246-114-pound sign. Again, that's 425-436-6277, access code 246-114-pound sign. Our new prayer line number will accommodate up to 2,000 participants. However, once we reach capacity, we will continue to offer the playback option. Call our playback number anytime after 7.30 a.m. Eastern Time each day, Monday through Friday, and you'll be able to replay the prayer call that you missed. To reach the playback line, please dial 425-436-6278 and enter the access code 246114-pound sign. Please note that this is not a toll-free number and therefore, depending on your phone carrier, rates may apply. Hey, Alfred Street family and friends. Are you visiting us for the very first time? Or perhaps you're new to Alfred Street and you want to stay connected to us or receive the latest Alfred Street updates via text. If so, all visitors text the word visitors with an S to our new direct text number 571-977-4525. That's 571-977-4525. Also, we invite you to tune in to our Faith Forward Weekly Radio Broadcast featuring Pastor Howard John Wesley every Sunday morning at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Magic 102.3 FM and 92.7 FM for a powerful sermon that will move you forward in your faith. For more information on these and all the exciting events taking place here at Alfred Street, please log on to alfredstreet.org.